Hello, welcome back to the Creative Differences Podcast. My name is Dallas, and I believe that black people make everything better. You cannot argue or you're racist. I'm Colin, and you know what? This time, I'm not going to dispute it. This, some experiences are, are just like, if you didn't have the black people in this, I would not care. I feel that. And welcome to another episode of the Creative Differences Podcast, your one-stop shop for movie reviews, fan cast, writers, throwback Thursdays, and a number of other pop culture-related items. Today, Dallas and Colin will be reviewing Day Shift. Yes, we will, hence everything we've been saying. Gabby's not here. She's off somewhere trying to get guzzled by a vampire. But if you like, share, and subscribe, maybe we can, you know, put out a search party for her. Because who knows when we're going to see her again. Colin. Me. You said that you're not going to dispute it this time. Would you normally dispute my praise of black people? I would normally dispute the whole, if you don't like it, you're racist got it, thing. Got it, got it, Is that because you usually fall on the side of racism? Yes, that is, yeah. I mean, I don't, but yeah. But I don't, but yeah. yeah. No, yeah. I remember last time. What was it? There was something I dug that myself were, into a yeah, hole. Yeah, you were yeah. saying, like, yeah, you could say that if you aren't interested, then you're anti-black. And yeah. I was like, Colin, are you, are you interested? <laughs> anyway, day shift. It's directed by J.J. Perry. This is his directorial debut, hmm. but... He's a stuntman and a stunt coordinator. Oh. And we were just recently talking about how dope it is when you let stunt people make action movies. Yeah. Because apparently they're really good at it. Makes sense. That stands here as well. The movie is written by Tyler Tice and Shay Hatton. Tyler Tice has done, let me check my notes, nothing. <laughs> no, like if you go to Tyler Tice's IMDb, it just starts with Day Shift, which oh, I think is really dope. That's awesome. Yeah. In terms of like writing your first screenplay. Yeah. That people know about yeah this is a good way to start it's a fun movie it's on netflix it has big people in it like shout out to Tyler. yeah Tyler. it's pretty impressive and shay hatton wrote john wick 3 army mm. of the dead army of thieves so you know oh okay big action big bang Wait. bang 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 army of thieves is the recent Zack snyder one with the yes, zombies but Zack snyder did not direct that movie i think he only produced it oh uh, hmm. it was directed by the guy who actually stars in the movie wait what because people were all up on his dick like that was never mind I think that was because of the first one. He did the first one, right? He did the first one. Yeah. That one was, a, the most recent oh. one was a spinoff of the one that he did before. Yes. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Speaking of producers, Chad Stahelski produced this movie, which makes a lot of sense because yeah. he makes the John Wick movies. Yeah. The John Wick writer, got a stuntman who's directing it. John Wick with vampires. And, you know, black people. Speaking of black people, the movie stars Jamie Foxx, Snoop Dogg, Dave Franco. We're getting away from black people now. Natasha Lou Bordizzo, uh, Megan Good, and Carla Sousa. Yes, Sabine, and also Laurel. Yeah, Natasha is playing Sabine in the upcoming Ahsoka series, and okay. Carla Souza played Laurel on How to Get Away with Murder. I appreciate the explanation. It's like I don't know what these words Shout are. Out words. Shouting at us. I figured it was other roles that they've played, but I, I don't. Know. It's been, to me. You can never know. Could have been anything. IMDb summary states: A hardworking blue-collar dad just wants to provide a good life for his quick-witted eight-year-old daughter. His mundane San Fernando Valley pool cleaning job is a front for his real source of income, hunting and killing vampires. Yeah, that accurately sums up Checks this movie. Out. Yeah, that that is a movie. What do you think, Colin? Uh, I liked it. This is one of those movies where it's like, I'll watch it. It's a fun time. I'm probably never going to think about it again. But hey, <laughs> I enjoyed it for what it was. Like modern day vampire hunting in L.A. is cool. I like it. I dig it. I like it. I feel like I could see myself going back to it just because of how how fun certain parts of it were. Mm -hmm. Let me say why I started this the way I did. This conversation we were having off mic. Oh, yeah. About mm -hmm. how black people make everything better. Yes. Because if this movie stars somebody else. Yes. Like, you know, your regular white action man. Uh -huh. I don't think I enjoy it the way I do it with Jamie Foxx. I would argue oh, yeah. that if Ryan Reynolds was starring in this movie, you would still like it. Yeah, but I wouldn't call him your regular white action man because he has a very specific, like when you see a Ryan Reynolds movie, you know what you're getting. It's like, okay. He does this have is, a very specific style. Yeah, his jokes are going to be there. It's going to be a Ryan Reynolds movie. But, you know, I didn't want to call out anyone as a regular white action man. So I won't. But Jamie Foxx, he has this flavor to him, like when he kills the first vampire and he's mm -hmm. like, with your old ass. And yeah. then when snoop dogg is fighting the vampire and jamie fox decides to just be his hype man yeah he's like get him big jay he didn't know show him what it is like it's such a ridiculous thing but i love it and it's just one of those things that this movie on itself story wise and everything it's fine but you pepper in you know jamie fox is great See, i like everybody in the movie i love dave franco and his little soft nerd character that he plays a lot 
Does he? He's, yeah, he's often the like the younger guy who's been put with the veterans and he's kind mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. new mm-hmm. to the game. Mm-hmm. If it's like a high school movie, he'll be the charming jock or the, uh, okay. the dickish okay. jock or something like that. But you know, now that he's too old to be playing a high schooler. Yeah. But he well, still looks I mean, how young. has that stopped anybody? Fair. You're right. Yeah. They do it. His relationship with Jamie Foxx's character, Bud, is pretty fun and they can do interesting things with it. Mm. Like a movie like this where you have world building and stuff like that, you have to do exposition to an extent. Yeah. And I think I like the way that they did it in terms of Jamie Foxx is a veteran. He's been out in the streets, in the field. He's mm-hmm. like, I know what I know. Mm-hmm. Dave Franco is not a field agent, so he works by the book. So then you kind of have this comparison of our different ways of knowing things. So when Jamie Foxx is challenging him on what he knows, it's a good way for the audience to learn things. Mm, so he's like, okay, so yeah. what do you know about this? And then James Franco was like, well, Southern vampires, blah, 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 blah. And there's yeah. Uber vamps and blah, 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 blah. And for the audience, I'm like, okay, cool. I'm learning things in a way that doesn't feel forced. Yeah, because it's not just a character saying things to another character that they should both know. Mm, okay, it's a character saying, saying yeah. I know more than you. And another character saying, well, maybe you don't. Mm. And that kind of stuff happens all the time. Yeah. So it feels natural. And I really enjoyed that. Because I hate when characters will just stop and be like, well, as you know, <laughs> it's like, bro, he does know. You don't need to tell him. But they did that well. The action. I really like it. It's just that scene with the Nazarian brothers, mm-hmm. which, man, I feel weird about liking that scene because they, Why? Were, they went pretty hard with the Armenian stereotypes. Ah, yeah, that's, that's fair. And that's not great. Because no. neither of the actors playing those brothers have Armenian names. I don't know if the actors are Armenian. Oh. It's like, I just assumed that they were and they were down with it. They could but, be. Hopefully they are. Let's say they are. They're probably not. Cool. We'll um, go with that. <laughs> but like the scene itself is so much fun. The way that the brothers fight. Yeah. Like one of them throws one single bullet to his brother yeah. who catches it in Ridiculous. the gun. Also the like shoe knives. Right. They have shoe knives. That's awesome. Jamie throws a mach- like hits a machete into a vampire's neck and then spins it around. Yeah. Somehow. Gets thrown up the stairs by a vampire. Oh, it's so much fun. And then Dave Franco is just struggling with that one vampire the whole time. It was like the most inefficient vampire ever. Why didn't she yeah, just kill him? She just didn't. She just dance. You, like, you got serving him the whole time. <laughs> but yeah, when that brother threw the bullet to his brother who caught it and shot, I was like, oh, that was that cinema right there. Call Martin Scorsese again. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him the Nazarian brothers are here. But yeah, it's not, it's not a movie I have a whole lot to say about. Mm-hmm. Like comedy wise, there are obviously jokes that don't hit. There are jokes that do. I don't really find it funny that Dave Franco just pees on himself sometimes. Yeah. It's like, all right, we're doing that. That's whatever. The movie redeems itself with this action. It's Jamie Foxx. It's Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg taking it's out Snoop his crib rag to dress a wound and then saying, what side for life? Like That was really good. I'm like, okay, this is just a Snoop Dogg. He's not playing the character. Yeah, that like, wasn't, just they, he broke character for a second that he just wanted to be. Uh, it's just one of those things. And it's, the movie is so silly mm-hmm. that it can pretty much give itself license to do whatever it wants. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Because there's nothing that the movie's going to do that you're thinking, this is too silly. Yeah. And it did something like that with Dave Franco's character. That I was thinking of that, yeah. Know, spoiler redacted. Mm-hmm. But when that happened, oh, I turned to Kayla and I thought, I don't know what my limit is for this movie. See, it's silliness. That was fine for me because they had set that up as a possibility earlier in the movie. Mm. They'd said that sometimes if you don't do this and this... Oh, right, it doesn't right, fully right. work. So I was okay. like, oh, okay. They set that up and now they're bringing it back for this. Like, that's cool. Fair. Fair, fair, fair. I've said a lot more than you have. I guess if I have any problems with this movie, it's that I didn't really vibe with Jamie Foxx and Dave Franco's character's relationship mm. at any point. Because it's like, first, you set it up as like, what Jamie Foxx doesn't want Dave Franco around because he's like going by the book and harshing his vibe and whatever. Like, what do you think he's there to do? Mm-hmm. I guess it's like, that Bud didn't realize what Seth was there for. I don't know. That was weird to me. But I felt like, that's one, one thing that Kayla and I talked about because when he finds out what Seth's whole thing is, kind of like, you know, mm-hmm. be a snitch. He seems kind of surprised. Yeah. But I think he just thought, I have to have a person with me. Ah, uh, but he's not actually going to do anything. Yeah. I don't, he doesn't need to, you know, snitch on me. He mm-hmm. just needs to be here. Mm hmm. But yeah, that took a little while to grow on me. Like by the end when, you know, everybody's buddies, it's great. I do want to say that um, there is a heel face turn in this movie that happens hmm. that I do not feel was built up enough oh, to be that... cared about. Okay, see, the, my problem with that heel face turn is that the character who turns says a line like, 
I was supposed to get close to you. And I'm thinking, you interacted you with did. this person for oh, five minutes. That. Okay, I know what you yeah. guys are talking about. Like, I was like, who had a heel face turn? But, two yeah. characters who meet for like five minutes and then don't meet again. And then this one turns. And I'm like, you didn't you didn't get close to them. I mean, you got physically close. That's true. I really didn't like that scene. Yeah. I mean, not, not the scene, that line. But for those who don't know, heel face turn is when a character goes from bad to good. Heel meaning bad, face meaning good. But yeah, when they said, oh, oh I was supposed to get close to you. I was like, you guys have talked one time. I was like, how do we even come to the point where we, this is a betrayal? Yeah. It's not like, I met you once. Like you met by as, happenstance. As, yeah. And then said, all right, bye. <laughs> like that wasn't, and that made me think maybe there was supposed to be something in here that didn't make it. Like mm-hmm. maybe because when that scene happens, that's when they a whole meet, lot to not make it right. Cause that scene happens when they meet and I think, okay, maybe they're going to build this. Yeah. And then I they thought just don't, it was going to be like a relationship or something, something, right. you know, and then they just don't do that. And then they still act like they did it. And it was like, you guys didn't, you didn't get close to this person at all. No, you saw them once. <laughs> so yeah, that was a bit, that was very unearned. Um, I really like Paige, the daughter. Oh, she's great. She was, she was fantastic. I like it when I feel like, Filmmakers have realized now that if you're going to have a kid in the movie, they have to contribute to the events in a way. She does that in a way that I really like. At the very least, in a dialogue way. Yes. They have to say things. They can't yes. just be there to be you know, kidnapped or yeah, yeah, whatever yeah, yeah. happens to kids in action movies. Because then we don't care. Yeah. What do you think of the villain? Audrey? Audrey, I think is her name. Audrey is her yeah, name. Audrey. She, I, this movie feels like it's trying to set up a world. Mm-hmm. More than it is that. trying to tell a story. Okay. And it feels like that's what she would like. They say something about we're going to be able to survive in the sun longer. I'm still not sure exactly how that was going to work. Uh, there's mentions of a bigger threat that obviously doesn't materialize because that's for a sequel if they ever get one. She was fine, but I never quite understood what she was actually planning. Mm, okay. Like besides, I guess, gentrification. But I guess so, yeah. But for vampires. Yeah. Yeah. The actors did a very good job. And, you know, mm-hmm. you got to have a hot vampire in vampire movies now. It's just a thing to do. But aside Which, from okay. that... Okay, here's, here's my critique of... This is not this movie's okay. problem. This is a vampire problem in general. I feel like if you want to have hot vampires, that's fine. But don't do the thing that every movie and TV show does where, like, when they decide to be vampire about it, they, like, get all wrinkly and gross. Mm. Just let, leave them hot. That's fine. They can be monsters and still be hot. It is an interesting thing. Like, we need you to be scary at least for a bit. Yeah. Like physically, like yeah, yeah. visually look mm-hmm, scary. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, you have giant sharp teeth and glowing red eyes. You're scary already. Right. You can also, you can move at super speed or whatever. Like, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, she was fine. Yeah. I didn't really get into this movie for like, well, oh, I wonder if the villains could be really fleshed out. I was like, <laughs> I want to see if Jamie Foxx kills some vampires in the valley <laughs> because that sounds like a fun premise. Yeah. And it was. So yeah, it's not groundbreaking. It's not the best movie I've seen all year. It was a fun time. Yeah. I recommend it if you like big, silly action movies. And you can uh, tolerate a lot of violence. It's so violent. It is very violent. As which was one of the things about it that I felt like was confusing to me because I feel like they could have done a better job of explaining some of the rules of how vampires worked. Because hmm. some of it felt like he just shot them and they were good and they were done. And I guess he was using special bullets, but we didn't... I guess we're just supposed to assume he was always using special bullets. But then they kind of said you have to do two things to kill vampires fully, but then he did... I don't know. It was weird. They also say that there's like a ranking system of vampires so True. Oh, that's there's fair. the elders and the young lings they're not called young juvies lings, yeah juvies southerners and then you have <laughs> uber vamps southerners. and uber vamps, eastern vamps yeah there's a lot of different rankings of vampires West Side vamps. and that also played into how difficult it was to kill them yes mm. yeah i do think they did a good job of world building if this decides to be a world mm-hmm. kind of like you know when John Wick was just about a guy killing some Russians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now it's so much more. But we'll see. We will see. That's the movie. That's Day Shift. Like it. Watch it. Maybe don't. It's up to you. Doesn't make a it's difference to It's on Netflix, to us. so it's easy to access. Exactly. You know somebody with Netflix. Maybe it's you. All right. What you watching? Colin. Yep. I'm going to ask you again. Yeah. Do you have anything? You watching anything? Closest I can tell you is, as I said off mic, I watched 10 minutes of a show before I noped out of it. That's the best I got. Do you, want, do you want to talk about the 10 minutes? Sure. I watched 10 minutes of the rehearsal because every person on Twitter is saying it's the best show ever and mm-hmm. I couldn't do it. It's, <laughs> like, do, you, do you know what the show is? So I've heard a description of it. Yeah. it's well, See, the, basically it's like Nathan Fielder is the guy behind it and I mm-hmm. guess he just does weird things. I don't know who he is. But his whole thing is like he approaches, you know, random people and offers them the chance to like 
rehearse something right. like an interaction they're planning to have right over and over. tell somebody something or something yeah like that. so for example the episode the 10 minutes that i watched was this guy who he does like weekly like trivia nights with a group okay and he had told them that he had a master's degree because they all did and he didn't want to feel stupid goodness but he told them that years ago he's been keeping the lie up for years and now he's finally like i have to tell them the truth but i don't want to do it i don't know how it's going to go so i want to so this is my chance to like do it over and over and it's like, I was fine for the first like minute. Mm -hmm. And then Nathan Fielder comes in and he's like, yeah, so every conversation, every part of my conversation with you to the guy, I've rehearsed thousands of times. Like we hired an actor. We watched your submission video. He got your psychology down. We made a scale model of your home so that we could practice with everything that you have so right. that I could make all these jokes, like specifically. Yeah. Like, I saw a clip from that. He yeah. Like, like, takes a book off and he's like, oh, that's such, such, such. Uh -huh. and, like, <laughs> and then he like. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like I why have you done this? And it's like I like I think I only made it 10 minutes in because that's where it got to the point where Nathan Fielder was like, "Yeah, so I took this guy out on a day trip to like get him to open up to me and like we went skeet shooting and I specifically had the the guns filled with blanks so that we would be bad at it so that he would open up to me and then we went to a pool and we were in a pool and I figured, "Okay, we'll talk in the pool and it's like he might open up to me." But then I had a I hired an old dude to get in the pool to be like to make him think that I was going to open up to him if this guy hadn't shown up. And I was like, this is Goodness gracious. the most manipulative thing I've ever seen. I don't like it. <laughs> wow. That is a that was, uh, it was It was a harsh 10 minutes. I got to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like something out of one of those shows like you. Yeah. Where we're following a person who's like terrifying. Yeah. That's what that's it. That's the kind of thing. That's that what it felt you like. You would hear on that show. Because it's like he would talk to this dude and he'd like make a joke or whatever. And then he'd be like, yeah, so I tried that joke with the you know the actor and it worked for him but it didn't work on the guy so i wonder why it didn't work on the guy like did he take it wrong and i'm like just why are you doing all this person. yeah interesting anyway that was uh the first 10 minutes of the rehearsal i'm not gonna watch any more of it but maybe you will audience all tell right. me if you do tell me if it gets better i bet it doesn't we got him ladies and gentlemen we got colin to say a thing during what you're watching they said it couldn't be done, but we've Maybe done that it. can be my thing. I'll just watch like 10 minutes of something. Yo, I'm down for you to give us a 10 minute, like a two minute this review was, of 10 minutes of a Yeah, thing. this was 10 minutes of a 45 minute episode. So. Yeah. I mean, hey, that can be your, that can be your segment. On to me. What I've been watching, what I've been doing. Previously on Creative Differences, the podcast, I told you guys, hey, Spectacular Spider-Man's on Netflix. Mm -hmm. And then later I said, hey, I watched a couple episodes. I'll mm -hmm. get back to you. Mm -hmm. Now I've seen it all. Okay. I rewatched both seasons. It ended. I was in shambles. I'm okay now, but I want to talk to you guys about it. I love this show so much. Hmm. Like, it holds up phenomenally well. When was it originally made? 2008, okay. I want to say. I think it ran 2008. That's relatively recent. I, mm -hmm. Okay. So, it's developed by Greg Wiseman, the genius who gave us Gargoyles and Young Justice, and uh, Victor Cook, who worked on a bunch of Disney stuff and a bunch of Scooby-Doo stuff. He was in the art department for the Aladdin sequels that everybody likes so much. Hmm. Um, he directed, I think, Atlantis 2... And some right. other sequel. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, he's great. Everybody's great. It stars Josh Keaton, Lacey Chabert, James Arnold Taylor, Darren Norris, Vanessa Marshall, and everybody in their mama because, you know, animated TV. They have all the actors, all the voice actors. And the IMDb summary basically says it's a cartoon about Peter Parker. <laughs> that's wow. That's, yeah. I mean, you know by now. Exactly. This is an animated television show that focuses on a 16 year old Peter Parker and the origins of Spider Man. So, yeah. Animated show about Peter Parker. First things first. Uh, Johnny Two Cellos on YouTube. Shout out to him. He has a video. It's about half an hour. It's on the Spectacular Spider-Man, and it does the show way more justice than I can do in these two minutes. So go watch that, but also listen to me. Oh, this show is so good. I think, I think it's my favorite Spider-Man thing outside of Spectac. No, what's the Spider Verse? <laughs> Into the called? Spider Verse. Into the Spider Verse, and a couple of the Tom Holland things that so, we got. So I mean, you kind of hyped it up and then immediately it was like except for these three other things so well, spider verse I, is spider verse come on well yeah that's the pinnacle of cinema yeah, exactly yeah this is the pinnacle of spider-man tv i don't know huh but why because the storytelling is done so well there are things that they do like all the relationship building uh-huh fantastic the way that they do to me the shipping on this show it's a show for shippers if there ever was one. They have the friends to romance ship with Gwen Stacy. They have Liz Allen, and she's a Latina in the show, which is dope. Is Lacey Chabert playing Gwen Stacy? Lacey Chabert is Gwen Stacy. Dope. Um, Wait, who's Liz Allen? Is that? Um, she's the black girl from Homecoming. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. 
And that one's kind of my like, twin. Yes. <laughs> And they build these relationships up in a way that's just so fantastic. But also the friendship relationships. Like one of my favorite things that they do is with Eddie Brock because Eddie mm. Brock's whole thing usually is he's kind of a scumbag reporter. Yeah. He lies about Spider-Man. Spider-Man tells on him. He's like, God, please kill Spider-Man. Mm. But really? No, that's just in Spider-Man 3. Oh, dang. But everything else, yeah. But in this one, they establish that these two are old friends. Oh, cool. So it hits a lot harder when Venom happens mm. and it doesn't just happen immediately okay every spider-man villain in the show we establish before they become who they are oh that's cool so it feels like the world is real it's lived in mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. like uh sandman and rhino are just two street level thugs before they actually get their powers gotcha for okay. a while mm, okay and peter has to make all these choices like you know, the way he always does but they affect things in a way that you can really feel it mm. like by the time eddie becomes venom it makes so much sense that he's pissed off at peter because oh. you know peter works for the daily bugle but they both work for dr connors so when the reptile oh. thing happens peter has to dip out because hey i'm spider-man uh -huh. but according to them it's like oh i gotta i gotta go i gotta curfew oh and then the next day when the bugle pictures come out and it says photos taken by peter parker it's like you did it's like to... bruh <laughs> yeah you dipped out to make some money like what is going you... on with you wow and okay. stuff like that happens over the course of the show so when it makes sense that Eddie would be pretty yeah. peeved at Peter by the time yeah, this yeah. whole thing happens. But yeah, stuff like that, like the black suit story that they do, mm -hmm. they do it in a way where Peter over time starts to act differently, but not in like a Spider-Man three way. Okay. And like, uh, just kind of lashing out at my friends, hmm. but I'm a teenager having a hard time. So it doesn't just seem random. Oh, okay. I got you. I got you. And then there's a fight scene between the black suit Spider-Man and the center six, which is one of my favorite things and anything but i won't spoil it because i want everyone who's listening to watch it it's just a really good show and i don't have enough time to tell you guys why <laughs> everyone should watch it it's fantastic unless you don't like spider-man because you know you're not gonna like that it's a very spider-man show <laughs> it it does have spider-man in the name the spectacular like... spider-man yeah but yeah i know what you're getting you know what it's under spider-verse but that's it okay so forget what i said about tom holland tom okay. holland i love you you're fantastic but this is this is my show mm, all right chef's kiss cinema or tom television. holland you are in the dirt <laughs> that's basically what Della said I lost your side discarded he's cool. you he's fine he's like you're nothing he's a, he's a good dude you're nothing solid dude nothing compared anyway, to this TV show it's a great show everybody watch it especially you to me because Greg Wiseman made it and you like Young Justice and you'd like this too Colin I want you to watch it as well so alright do that anyway <laughs> I don't even watch what I want to watch <laughs> that's true Colin watching TV Colin uh, Colin watched 10 minutes of a show and was like yeah I watched the show Colin doesn't even watch the shows he likes yeah there's so many shows, Colin. Whatever, we need to get into that. The way Colin disappoints us. News! Some trailers came out. One of which Colin said he wants to watch. Bet he won't. It's called The Menu. See, that's the problem with The Menu is like, I would like to see it, but it's so... It feels like it's only it's not going to get a wide release, or if it is, it's not, you know. I don't know, we'll see. It's hard to tell. Looks like it's a chef. It's coming out in November, so it probably will get a wide release. I don't think it's like some indie film. Yeah, and the Lemley's dead, so where are they going to put it? Uh, that's a good point. Yeah. Um, Rip. So, yeah, as, as you described it, it's, it looks like the most dangerous game with chefs. Yeah. Which, that sounds interesting. Well, see, that's the thing is, like, the first half of this trailer, I was like, okay, obviously something weird's going on here. That's fine. Then it turned into the most dangerous game, like they're in the woods being hunted by chefs. And I'm like, okay, now I'm interested in mm -hmm. whatever. To, how do we get here? Why is this what you're doing? I have questions. You have answers. I want to know. I feel that. Also, I really like the cast. Mm -hmm. I like uh, Anya Taylor-Joy. I like Nicholas Holt. I really love, uh, I think her name is Janet McTeer. She is from Ozark for me. Mm -hmm. But she's the older white lady who was like, oh, we're all going to die here. Oh, okay. <laughs> she's fantastic. You know, Voldemort's cool too. I like yeah. Ray Fiennes. He is a scary man. Shout out to Amy Carrero. I'm glad to see her career is thriving right now. Yeah. Shout out to her. And uh, I don't know the actress's name, who I believe is the actress from Watchmen. Hong Chao, I think. Sure. But she's dope too. It just has a lot of dope people and it looks weird and like darkly funny. Yeah. That's pretty much, yeah, that's it. Did yeah. you have anything else to say about it? No, nah, I mean, I want to see it. I'm curious to see if like there's going to be any kind of cannibalism in it because I feel like that's where this is going, but I don't know. Uh, I was going to say, this is the movie for Army Hammer, but you know. Oh. Uh... <laughs> Moving on. The other trailer is, it was, it's really for me and it would be for Gabby, but you know, she hasn't been seen or heard from in who knows how long. I mean, this is another thing that I want to watch and probably won't. 
<laughs> so it's called Mo, and it stars Mo Amer. He's a comedian. He's an actor. I know him from Rami. He plays my favorite character on that show. Gabby introduced me to Rami and then disappeared into the wind. But yeah, the show looks great. It's on Netflix. He's so funny. Like the way that he does things. It's one of those, you know, culture shock situations. Mm -hmm. Just He's in Texas. The show takes place in Houston. Mm -hmm. I believe I believe he's from Houston by way of Palestine. Or Palestine by way of Houston? Which one is the first? No, by way of means... I think by way of is where you start or where you're like born. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. I shouldn't have tried that phrase. Nope. I don't know how to use it. Nope. Anyway, he was born, I think, in Palestine and then lived in Houston. And that's why Bun B is in this trailer. If you know who Bun B is, shout out to you. But he's a Houston rapper. Oh, very okay. famous, very prominent. He plays a priest, I guess. He's in the confession booth. Didn't oh, say anything. Oh, gotcha. Okay. But presumably he will in the show. It just looks so funny. And it's just pointing out the way that white Texans don't know anything about <laughs> Brown culture, like when yeah. the lady in the store is oh like, God. oh, you want some chocolate hummus? And he's like, did you say chocolate hummus? You just insulted my family. Lo siento, I didn't know hummus was Mexican. Ah, oh, God, it's so good. But you're so confident that this man is Mexican because he's brown and you're in Texas. Right. Uh, it looks funny. I have long buried the hatchet with Netflix. So I'm glad to watch this. I'm glad to support. I mean, Netflix is having some issues, but we need to get into that. This, is, this looks funny. It does. It comes on in August. I have like half a dozen shows to watch in August. I wish, I wish people would stop because I'm the opposite of Colin. Colin watches nothing and I try to watch everything and it's exhausting. I'm so tired. Free yourself. I could. I could free myself. But Dallas actually likes watching things. I do. I like, so I like, I like, I like watching TV. things. I don't believe you. I just don't watch things. <laughs> uh, there's so many shows. But This that's... man can watch an hour long like web series of people playing D D, but ask them to watch a tv you, show hour long they're at least two i was being generous <laughs> you'll watch a dude on youtube review oreo flavors for like two hours yeah <laughs> but won't watch a tv show i respect it you like what you like yeah but the problem is you like what you like and then you just don't watch what you like as well yes so like there's only so much time to watch what i like and i gotta prioritize what i like over what i like <laughs> <laughs> you know that it doesn't make sense but it makes sense like for you yeah. it makes sense <laughs> anyway on to the news speaking of netflix the russo brothers got another movie coming out and oh, it has michelle yo stanley tucci jason alexander brian cox and jenny slate do you know what it is it is a russo brothers movie on netflix we don't know anything more i mean yeah probably let me open like link. plot wise is what i'm asking <laughs> yes but first also millie bobby brown and chris pratt that's what, when you open the link, there's more people. It's directed by the Russos, written by the guys who write all their movies, Christopher Marcus and Stephen McFeely. And it is based on an adaptation of the illustrated novel by Simon Stalinach. What's the novel? It didn't even, you didn't even say a novel name. Nope. <laughs> what? Based on what? I just read a sentence, Colin. What's it called? This, this is how we do news. Um. Anyway, it's set in a retro futuristic past where an orphan Wait, hold on, hold on. Stop. Okay. Retro futuristic past. Yeah, you know. The what? past and the future. No, what does that mean? It's the what does that it's mean? A re <laughs> what does that mean, Dallas? You explain that to me. Okay, so you know retro, right? Retro is like, like the old. past, like, like the past, uh -huh, yeah, yeah, uh -huh. and then futuristic, right? So that's like new. Yeah, like yeah, we're yeah. imagining what's gonna happen next. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But also the past. How? <laughs> <laughs> we're an orphan teenager. <laughs> you can't just say words. <laughs> Deadline, did shouldn't have. Anyway. Colin, for the record, the thing is called the Electric State. Thank you. I will look that up and try to figure out what the retro futuristic of past is. Anyway, I'm pretty sure that it just Colin. means that it's futuristic, but there's a lot of retro elements to it. What does that mean? But also in the past. <laughs> anyway, an orphan kid does what now? Yes. Uh, Millie Bobby Brown traverses the American West with a sweet but mysterious robot. Hey, Colin, you like robots? I do. And an eccentric drifter in search of her younger brother. Okay. So, boom. Who's playing the drifter? It doesn't say. Okay. Probably Chris people. Pratt, seeing as he was already Damn. cast in the movie before all these people. Sure. I was hoping Michelle Yeoh was the drifter. That would have been dope. Maybe Chris Pratt is playing the voice of the robot. Uh, sure. Maybe. maybe he's the younger brother. <laughs> <laughs> That's the twist. You never know, Colin. He's a younger, he's a senior, younger, older brother. Like retro futuristic past. I hate <laughs> everything about this movie. I'm going to watch it because I... I like those directors. I like the writers. I like right. the cast. Yeah, you tell me what retro futuristic past I means. will let you know. Thank you. I will let you know. It's just going to be like Probably something like Into the Badlands, which was in the future, but also had a lot of retro stuff in it. Or it could be like Star Wars. That was a long, long time ago, but also has stuff that we don't have yet. 
lasers Maybe. and such. Yeah, that's true Maybe. because Star Wars has a lot of futuristic it's a stuff, very futuristic but it's past. also very analog. Yeah, see, look at that, Colin. Retro futuristic past. All right, sure. that's that movie. I'm down. Colin's not. I will let him know. Yep. <sighs> and now we have to get into this. Wait, hold on. What's up? Before we get into that, okay. Um, did you see the news that I shared with you specifically yesterday? I don't think you did. What was it? Uh, Love, Death, and Robots got renewed for season four. <gasps> oh my god! Yeah, Demi pointed that out, and then I just oh tried to tag god. you, and you didn't say anything. But I wanted you to know because it's very important to me that you know. Yeah. It went past the season three. Oh my god! Netflix let it get past the season three. Yeah. Are you gonna watch season They're four? Usually a lot oh, more. 100%. They're usually a lot more generous with their animated shows than they are the live action stuff. Yeah, but didn't they That's just true. say they were cutting a bunch of their animated stuff, or was that somebody else? That was HBO Max. No, oh, it, Netflix was the ones who fired a bunch of yeah, the animation fired a people. Bunch of people. Yeah. Anyway, but yeah, yeah they're making dope. more Love, Death, and Robots. I'm, I'm happy. very excited yeah. about it. I feel like at the rate we've been going, it's just going to be death and robots. There's yeah, already there's, not a lot there's of not love. There's not really much season. love, honestly. So it's going to be, hey, robots and people dying. But, but I'm down. It's a fun show. Yeah. It's the one show Colin continues to watch season after season. Yeah. That's the secret. Make your episodes 10 minutes long. <laughs> watch yeah. them. Oh, God. I'm suddenly afraid for when Arcane comes back. Colin might just not watch it. I'll try, but, you know. We'll see. You're not going to watch it. <laughs> I would like to. Sure. <laughs> you say this, but I don't believe you. Uh, but yeah, the show is wild and violent. Speaking of wild and violent. Oh, no. Ezra Miller, we're oh. back. Warner Brothers, they have... So... It really... Here's the thing. Okay. Did you say the Mad Libs thing? Was that on camera? or on? Mic? It was the last episode. Yes, indeed. It was. Okay. It so was, yes. You I may recall, it. viewers... Listeners, whatever you want to call If you don't yourselves. recall, I'm just going to put the auto clip right, right here. Perfect. Um, the headlines are just, they're Mad Libs at this point. Enter a place, enter an illegal act. Ezra Miller reported to illegal act in insert place here. Damn if that isn't exactly how it is. Like, <laughs> ooh. Yeah, because shortly after, you sent something to the chat that said Ezra Miller has been charged with felony, burglary, and Stanford, Vermont. Yep. Ezra Miller has entered crime and entered location. And apparently Warner Brothers, you know, realized they might have to do something about that. Took them a while. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure they've known for a while they'll have to do something about it. Yeah, they're just like, okay, maybe we should, we should, we should say something. And I'm still not sure if they outwardly said something or if this was like yeah, sources saying. I haven't say seen anything about from them, them right? actually saying anything. Yeah, I just keep hearing they have this like three option plan. Which you always had three options, so. But uh, yeah, according to the Hollywood Reporter, they see three ways forward. If Miller can get themselves together, you know, stay out of trouble. That's not enough. <laughs> explain their behavior. Stop the crime tour. <laughs> Then it says Miller could participate in the marketing for the film in a limited capacity. I think that is ridiculous. Yeah. Like, because here's the thing. If I'm a journalist mm -hmm. who's going to interview Ezra Miller, I don't care if you tell me this is about the flash. I'm not going to ask about the flash. They're not going to let me do the interview because I'm only going to say <laughs> what is going on with you. What is happening? Like, that's what the people want to know. Yeah. So it's like, what do you think is going to happen if you let them participate in the marketing? Yeah. You're going to have to control that extremely tightly. You also can't control what they're going to say at any right, point. Right, what they're going to say or do. Like, right. Jokes aside, I do really hope that Ezra gets themselves together. Yeah, this is scary. Can stop, just stop. But I wouldn't put them in front of a camera. No. And promote the move. Like, Warner Brothers. Because the thing is, like gonna go back to the jokes for a second i feel like the second you put them in front of a camera a swat team is gonna burst in like we've been looking for them but also by the time this movie comes out i feel like you guys are gonna want people to be thinking as little about ezra miller as possible even if yeah. they are the lead of this movie yeah right this that's the what this how feels you market like. that, See, that but... is exactly that's what this feels like is it feels like a like a you know Kevin Spacey situation or like a, where a prominent actor we don't talk about that person is exactly <laughs> but that's just it right and one of the ways that they did that was we're going to redo this movie with someone else in this role mm -hmm. right but, but that was such a small role it, it was yeah. I know but this feels like okay also it's also I feel like there's a difference between Kevin Spacey garbage <laughs> but you can be like oh Kevin Spacey did that in the past Ezra Miller is actively like almost on the daily <laughs> committing a crime at what point do you say we can't market this person? WB is currently busy singing, we don't talk about Ezra, ra, ra, ra. <laughs> Which leads us to second option. 
If Miller decides not to get help or reach out, sounds more likely, unfortunately. Uh, the film will be released as planned, but Miller will not participate in promotion and will be recast in future projects. Uh huh. Third decision is the most drastic, according to Gizmodo. Despite the fact that Warner Brothers has already spent around $200 million on this movie, the film could still be canceled. That didn't stop them from canceling Batgirl. I was going to say, y'all already she canceled Batgirl. Wasn't... Was Batgirl $200 million? It was no, 90. it was 90. Yeah, but it was going to cost them so more to do reshoots and stuff like that. So it would have come up to almost. To a lot. 200 well okay or it so, would come up to like maybe 150 mm -hmm. but at that point like they don't have any drama i'd rather <laughs> spend the money on that what i can't yeah. help but notice is that you didn't specify any sort of determining factors between option one. two and option three yeah so i don't think three is gonna happen unless the crimes get especially heinous to quote the law and order intro and well, as much and as <laughs> As much as I have said, well, if you cancel that girl, you should just cancel the Flash. I also do not believe in like. I would feel bad for all of the artists who put their work into this. Yeah. yeah. Well, see, the thing is, it's an interesting thing, right? Because when you have that discussion, it starts to be like, what is the thing that is most important? Is it most Money. important that your art gets put out into the? If you're the artist who oh, works on it, it, is it most important that your art gets out into the world, even though? it now is accompanied by everything that Ezra Miller has done because you already got paid. You already did the work. You got paid for that work. Your transactional part of this is done. Me seeing the movie does not give you more money. You got what you're going to get unless you're like an actor and then you get, there's that and royalties and residuals. And, but like, I'm, you know, but then it's like, I don't know what, like most artists make art for the purpose of being seen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Me personally, as a filmmaker, like I'm like, yo, it would suck if yeah. my lead who I didn't get to cast for the record. Right. Oh, they didn't. No, them? the director of the film didn't cast it. Like Ezra Miller's been playing this oh, character right, right, for right, right, right. years now. So like, was, was it the Muschietti? Muschietti? Yeah. Muschietti kind of has to be stuck with that. And like, if I put all this work into this movie that I think is a really, really good movie mm -hmm. and nobody got to see it. Yeah. I got paid for it, but I'd still be pretty upset about it. Yeah. Hmm. That sucks. Yeah. I don't think they should cancel it. I think that would be drastic, but Save that girl. <laughs> they should probably recast Ezra. They should. That should automatically yeah. be like there. There are no other options. Just recast. Because even if Ezra comes out and you know says you know I want to get myself together, my bad fam. Here's where that family is. <laughs> like Jesus, and I, the grown woman that I'm currently. Right. Here's everyone. Everyone I was hiding. They're in this room. Ta-da! I'm in the storage unit. You don't know Ezra's mental state. I don't think that we should be putting them in movies right now. You know, let's yeah. figure this out first. Yeah, this feels like the kind of thing where they and, go, you know, talk to a therapist or something for right. a while. And then we can talk about like even smaller projects, mm -hmm. like not a huge superhero thing that like. Yeah, this yeah. sounds like a, being an actor is stressful. Doing press is stressful. Being under scrutiny is stressful. And we don't need to add stress to this person who has been wiling. Yeah. Across the country. <laughs> from Hawaii to Vermont. Like, yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. Much. Further than that, Iceland. Iceland? Yeah, wasn't Iceland where they like choked out that girl? I think that might have been abroad. I don't know if it, it was, was Iceland. It wasn't in America. Was it was so an they, international They're international. Incident. This is an international crime spree. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. <sighs> you got to recast it. You, you, gotta, ha yeah. you have to. You got to recast it. But I hope, I hope they're okay. I hope that everyone there hiding is okay. I hope Runner Brothers just... Just let this one go. Put the movie out. Be like, all right, we're going to get you some help. Just put the movies out. Yeah, Not definitely put the movies the out. Not even just The Flash. Like, put Batgirl out. Like, and then you can reset whatever you want. Just let me see it. They have a 10-year plan to me. They've this may be the 10-year plan. They've been saying since, like, 2013. They have a plan. They make a new 10-year plan every three or four years. <laughs> <laughs> you don't understand the vision. But, yes, I hope Ezra gets some help. I hope Warner Brothers pays for it because they have so much money they should yep. pay for it. Yeah. That's fair. And yeah, I hope they get to, you know, people get to put their movies out and we can just, not everything has to be an Anita Fiance universe. <sighs> also, not everything needs to be a $200 million budgeted movie, but that's for a different true. soapbox day, guys. True, true, true. I wonder if it's soapbox. Huh? Soapbox. Yes, it's a, box. It's a soapbox. Stand like a crate. Yeah. Because I, for some reason, always pictured someone standing on one, like a box, like, like a, a bar of soap. Yes. <laughs> like uh -huh. an Irish spring. Uh -huh. that's, yeah, that's not going to get you very high. Every time I go on one of these rants, that's absolutely what I'm standing on. Just the one <laughs> box of soap. 
<laughs> you take a box of Dove and put it under your feet. Yeah. And she just stands on it. Yeah, different opinions. We got one. Hey. We got a comment. It's on Facebook. Right. Facebook, episode 195, Bullet Train Prey and the Death of Batgirl. Hey, look at that. Comment is from Dennis. Shout out to Dennis. I know you. Comment is, this should be a fun episode. I need to see Bullet Train this weekend. I hope you did. Yeah. Because it's dope. I've seen it twice. It's so much fun. Demi hasn't seen it yet, but I hope she does. Yeah. Uh, yeah, thanks for listening. Also, Dennis is probably the person who on Facebook takes my opinions into consideration the most. Hmm. I posted, oh, Spectacular Spider-Man's on Netflix. And then he said, I'm going to watch it just because of this post. And then later he was like, yo, that show is super dope. Mm. And I was so happy because I want everyone to watch it. And I want that to be the experience for everyone. Okay. Starting with Demi and then Colin when Colin starts to watch things. If. When if Colin starts to watch things. I have the same amount of faith in Colin watching things Whoa. as I do in WB having a 10 year plan. Whoa. Oh no, that's wow. Okay. All right. I get it though. Why do you have to equate <laughs> me to that? <laughs> because you don't be watching stuff. It was also a fantastic joke. You've got I to do be major. watching stuff. True, true, just true. not the stuff I want to watch. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I watch the other stuff I want to watch. What made you watch the rehearsal? Well, because he said Twitter. Well, Twitter no, it was, it was that, but then one of my friends, a couple of my friends specifically said, yo, y'all should watch this. And I was like, well, these are people I know, so I might actually care what they have to say as opposed to just the random... I'm sorry, Colin. You not have friends? not yet said, no, I'm saying about the rehearsal. Right. Okay, right. but like, me and Dallas have been like, telling Twitter. you to watch many other things. Everything like, I tell you to watch, Harley you just Quinn. don't watch. Stranger Things, Harley Quinn, Res Dogs, yeah. Spectacular Spider-Man. Because, okay, Only murders he, in the building. Let me explain why I don't watch most of those things. I don't watch most of those things because my thing is these are subsequent seasons. I don't remember anything that happened in the last one. I feel they like have I have recaps. to rewatch the last one. And then I can't bring myself to do that because that's a lot of effort. But they have recaps they have most recaps. of the time. Do they? They have yes. YouTube videos that are like, hey, everything that happened in six minutes. Oh, all right. Maybe I should actually But also, they usually this. have official recaps before the season starts. Sure. Mm. And you've never seen Spectacular Spider-Man. Right. That's so. why I said most of these things. I fair. gave fair, fair, fair. an allowance for that. But also, yeah. Oh, these people are I, my friends. I care what they have to say. Not you, Dallas. <laughs> or to me. <laughs> or to me. I know for a fact that Harley Quinn has a recap when the season starts. It does. Oh, nice. Anyway, that's Colin. Um, we didn't need to do a different opinion today because Colin was talking. Yeah. So shout out to that. Good job. Thanks. Which means that's everything. We did it. We did another episode. Shout out to us. Audience, thank you for listening. Thank you to, you know, just being here with us. We appreciate you as people. As always, thank you Crown Digital, Brandon and Aya for putting us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Demi, thank you for editing, putting us on YouTube, coming in with the, the facts and the knowledge, like what that movie is called from the Russo <laughs> Brothers. Because I, I didn't see it. It's funny because you... I know that you looked at that sentence because that's how you realized that Chris Pratt and Millie Bobby Brown are in it. Yeah, I think I was looking for names. So I was like, there's other people in this. Who are they? And then I skipped right past the title of the movie and got to futuristic retro past future. Yeah. Retro futuristic past, obviously. Oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. That one. Uh, Colin, thanks for talking. Yeah. Vibing. Watching the vampire movie. Yeah. We're going to get know, you watching this. This is why more things. Okay. No, I don't want to say this because streaming services are going in bad places hmm. but i think more things should be on streaming services in some extent because i would not have gone out of my way to see this i feel you. but i could click a button yeah you on wouldn't my computer have gone to the in my room for day like, show. Yeah. honestly i wouldn't either so yeah this but episode also, is brought to you by netflix combine streaming services even though you don't do that because everybody wants their own money but like stop having so many streaming services stop putting ads on them what are you doing why are you reinventing cable I was about to say, we're literally just reinventing cable right now. We're just heading in that direction where somebody's going to give a deal for all of these things. And I'm like, well, also, just cable. Uh, yeah. WB specifically, what if I want to lean back sometimes? You can't lean back. I can't lean back? That's for the women. I see. <laughs> I have to lean in at all times. Lean in at all times. That's exhausting. I'm sorry. It's your fault. No. <laughs> where were we? But also, yeah, thanks for talking for what you're watching because yeah. that was a feat. Never thought we'd get there. Uh, that can be my thing. I'll just watch 10 minutes of something <laughs> and sum up the 10 minutes. It'd be more than what you're watching now. That's true. Yeah. Audience, let us know. What do you think of Day Shift? Do black people make everything better? Yes, they do. Because if you say no, guess what? You're racist. Uh, <laughs> let us know in the comments or hit us on Twitter at y'all underscore different. Facebook.com slash creative differences PC or Instagram and Tumblr at creative differences podcast. You know where I'm going with this. If you want to talk about Spectacular Spider-Man, because I didn't get to do it enough, find me on Twitter and or Instagram at a king named Simba. I'm going to do it with or without you. But if you want to join me in that conversation, find me. I'm there. I love this show so much. Tell me what show I should watch 10 minutes of next. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at one. Duck McGuck. To me, is unfindable. She doesn't exist. Yes, but also <laughs> you should watch the first 10 minutes of Harley Quinn and see if you want to finish the season. Sure. We'll see. <laughs> And you can find Gabby on Twitter at got that good suck. All one word. 
no underscores <laughs> all right all right it's been different bye colin me question yeah do me too if you want to join in okay if you had to choose a vampire to be bitten by See, who would you choose? I, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Are we talking? Because there's different kinds. This is a very magic long list. Different. Because the problem is, you Just have to one. figure out what universe we're in. Any vampire, what any the fictional. But how does the magic? How, what can they do? What can they not do? They can bite you and suck you. I don't want to be bitten by a vampire. I don't think vampires are cool. I see. I feel like I've got recency bias. Okay. Well, what you got? Because the first thought was Silas Briarwood from The Legend of Vox Machina. But like I said, the list is long. Demi wants to get sucked. <laughs> We'll take that. I like vampires. Demi wants to get sucked.